So I like reviewing all types of guns, but I've really become obsessed with World War I and World War II type guns over the past couple of years. From watching legacy collectibles and forgotten weapons to even just doing my own World War II research. There's a channel here on YouTube, Mark Felton, that does amazing World War II documentaries. And I have gone down this rabbit hole uh, for the past couple years and I find myself fascinated with it like millions of other people. And one of the coolest parts of my job here is I get to review guns, but with these types of guns, they tell a story. They have a story to be told. Now, will we ever figure out that story and all of the parts of it? Uh, maybe not uh, with some of these, but they're really cool and they have a story and they have character. And a lot of these are war trophies too. So there's all kinds of uh, different things that go inside uh, these types of guns, man. And that's why I really like it. And this was a gun that I, man, I, I, I saw in a gun shop. Didn't like the one I saw in a gun shop, but I got hooked up with a guy that has a variety of these and he really brought them all to the table and said, hey, look them over. If you want one, here's the prices on them. And to find a gun like this, this has to be one of the coolest guns that I found at one of the best prices in today's market in a long time. Uh, even if I paid full retail, it's still one of the coolest guns that I found in a long time. And I know you guys are saying, just shut up, dude, and open the box, and I'm going to. But I have to tell you about my new channel. The first link in the description is to my new channel. If you'd like to see what I'm doing over there, I'm hanging out with you guys through streaming, and also, I'm actually making music as well. So you got to find out a little bit about my backstory, me and Miss Hegshot's backstory, and uh, some other things. So there you go. That'll be the first link in the description. And also a big thanks to our patrons and everything that you guys do for us, subscribers here and all that. So I'm gonna open this up. It did come with this case, all right? And this case really has no significance except for being just a cool part of the story here. So what I have here is a 1912 C96 broom handle Mauser. And I'm gonna pull this out for you. We're gonna, I'm gonna tell you everything that I know about it, or at least some of the things I know about it until maybe we do the full review or comparison. It came with everything you see here, and then there was one more hidden gem right in here that I will also show you. Really glad to have gotten the case too. Right, here it is, C96. This is a 1912 broom handle Mauser. These things were produced from 1896 all the way to 1937 uh, with a 10 round internal box magazine. Some of them had detachable uh, 20 and 40 round magazines. Uh, there were some full auto versions of these as well. There were some nine millimeter calibers. There was so many countries that actually made these their own variants. Uh, there is a lot of history to this gun. And I mean, it was made for a very long time. Now, these were actually used during World War II, even though production stopped in 1937, the Luftwaffe actually wanted some of these guns. I think they ordered 7,800 of these guns from old stock that they had previously. Uh, the C9s, which are super popular, are chambered in nine millimeter, uh, were actually developed during World War I, and they basically burned that nine and then painted it to designate that specific caliber, okay? They didn't want the guns getting mixed up. This is a big honking gun. There's some carbine versions out there and, and just a lot, but just some of the basic specs that I could find, 2.8 pounds uh, as far as the weight. Now there was also a shorter one called the Bolo, which I'm pretty sure they had to make that one because of the restrictions of the Treaty of Versailles uh, after World War I. Huge restrictions put on Germany and one of those restrictions was barrel length, and chamberings and things like that. So you, you have a lot of different things out there. Now this one is actually chambered in 7.63 by 25. And of course it's a 1912 gun. So it's before World War I even started. So this is a, a commercial gun. The cool thing about this one is not only do all of the parts, the barrel, the hammer, uh, the safety, the grips are actually numbered as well. All of these numbers every single number down to the last little piece that I could find are all matching. And we're of course gonna show you up close because it's just kind of hard to do it right here in this setting, but everything is matching. This lanyard loop right here is period correct. Everything, <laughs> everything is correct, which makes it 
super exciting. On the right side of the gun, it's Waffenfabrik Mauser Obendorf, a Necker. So yeah, my, my German isn't the best, um, but there you go. Of course, this one has a 10 round internal box magazine. And also one thing that matches is the stock right here. So this is a dual purpose thing that they would actually have, which would act as a holster for the gun. Okay. And of course we have to drop the hammer for this to work properly. But basically you could put it in there like that, attach it to your belt, or you could almost use this as a short barrel rifle. You have a slot back here. And essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach this just by pulling this lever right here, sliding it up in place. And now you have yourself a short barrel rifle, essentially C96 Mauser. By the way, they called it a broom handle because you can kind of tell it kind of looks like a broom handle. So pretty cool right there, man. A very just awesome piece. Is it a little gimmicky? Yeah, probably. But I'm really, really glad that this example came with that. The other two that the gentleman had that he brought me, um, uh, they, were not, they were not all matching like what you see here. Um, it also came with some ammo. And this is actually super helpful for me because I definitely wanted to shoot it. Uh, this is the 30 Mauser or the 7.63 by 25, which is kind of a hard round to find right now, although I did find some online. Uh, and it comes on these stripper clips. And essentially, I'm gonna load it up and show you what that looks like. And it also came with this right here. This looks very similar to a box of ammo that you would buy today, except it also has the places in here so you can put your stripper clips. Marked with DWM right there. And this looks like period correct ammo as well. And I also came <laughs> with 20 original rounds made in Germany, a bunch of German that I can't read, uh, although I do know what that is, Deutsch Waffen Munition something something another. Um, and yeah, it has two more stripper clips full of ammo inside of that. They made over a million of these guns easily with all the variants, who knows how many are really out there. Uh, but this was a popular gun. Winston Churchill liked this gun and I think he actually used it in one of his battles. But you gotta think, at, in a time period like this, uh, in 1896, you had guns like the Borchardt, which was kind of widely accepted as the first auto-loading or semi-auto pistol. But most of the pistols out there were revolvers. So the fact that you could have a 10-round uh, magazine-fed gun like this is pretty crazy. What's also pretty crazy is the fact that this thing goes out to 1,000 meters. That's kind of ridiculous. You have a V-notch back here. It's very similar to any Mauser K98, K type of elevator sight right there with the with the v-notch in the front essentially what you have is you have your bolt right here which you can charge the gun here's your internal magazine right there to pull this gun apart i'm not going to do it right here but it is very easy to do this you basically have a little pin right here pull the uh spring and everything out of the uh, uh out of the internal box magazine part here and then you, this basically just slides off and then you can take all the little pieces apart. Very easy uh, design to take apart. Really the only thing I think you need a tool for is just the screw right here in the handle. That's it. So I did fire this gun and I do wanna show you, you have essentially you have little slots right here just like with your K98s and your stripper clip goes down into the gun just like that. I'm not gonna load this one right here, but I'll show you in video what that looks like to load it. But again, just like the K98K, you're just gonna push these straight down. They go in in a staggered design, and then clip comes out, and you load the pistol back up, all right? If you wanna drop it with and rounds aren't in it, you just kinda put pressure down on that follower, and then you can bring the slide and the bolt back home there, okay? I was able to shoot this one magazine, and I kept having these issues where the bolt would not go back in a battery, so I just kind of hit it back in there, and I thought maybe it was just underpowered ammo. Well, it turns out that the recoil spring broke. On the very last shot, I couldn't get the bolt to go back home at all. When I got home, upon further inspection, 
the recoil spring broke. So I kept the original one and I put a reproduction in here and now it works just fine. Okay, so after 109 years and the recoil spring breaks, I'll take that. That's not too bad at all. Right here is your safety, by the way, and this basically renders the trigger uh, useless. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna fire, it's not gonna drop. Uh, and then you drop it back right here and then it will go into fire mode on the back of the firing pin right there. Pretty comfortable to hold, not too bad at all. Of course, it's got a lot of front end mass. All right, so it is kind of similar to shooting a revolver, really, unless you put the stock on, then you can kind of hold it like this and really get a, a, a good grip on this gun. But essentially, when it's like this, uh, this is the most comfortable way, I think, to actually hold this gun just like that. 109 years old, dude, and this thing is still rocking it out. I wanted to show you this, and I got this gun for 2,500 bucks, dude. I reached out to a favorite gun channel of mine, Tom at Legacy Collectibles, and I said, Tom, take a look at this gun and tell me what you think this thing is worth after some investigation, and, and they're very cool like that. They will do that for, for their customers. Um, after some investigation, he looked at it, he was like, hey, I would sell this gun anywhere from $3,500 to $4,000. So I felt very, very fortunate that I was able to meet up with the guy that had this and meet him through our local gun shop because we both go to the same place and very fortunate that I got the deal that I got on this gun. I'm going to take this out again uh, since I got the new recoil spring. I think everything is going to be fine um, and I'm going to shoot one more. I, I really don't want to shoot this ammo, and I know some of you are probably cringing at the idea of me doing that, but I want to shoot one more, one more magazine through this gun and make, you know, just to make sure, because I like to shoot my guns. I don't use them as just safe queens. I actually shoot them, and I think I'm going to do that and then eventually get some newer production ammo so I can save the rest of this stuff right here. But I thought some of y'all might find interest in one of my newest pickups and one of my coolest guns that I've picked up in a long time. Love to hear your questions, comments, and all of that down below. Any C96 Mauser owners or World War II history lovers of any kind, let me know what you think about the gun down below. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.